lie there. Well, you've just done that great big fancy painting, which is rather fun. Now for something completely different again, as that was. I'm going to do a large watercolour this time of Lincoln. Um, I did some nice shots there when I was visiting one day and then lost the entire file, but luckily I'd sent just two of the shots which you've just seen, the interior of the cathedral and this scene looking through the uh, archway here with the cathedral behind uh, to a friend, so I managed to get them back again. Um, and what I've done is put these figures in. So the original picture is this one and then, as you've just seen beforehand, I've done a couple more composites which I'll show you now again where I put these figures in with photo paint and move them around. Very handy to do that because it saves a lot of drawing and you can see what the composition is like and try different scenes and lights and figures. So we finished up then with this one with the two larger figures in the foreground which I hope will lead my eye in more to here. The other thing I've also found um, is that the original picture has the cathedral very dark behind. And looking through the internet the other day, I found somebody's photograph with the uh, cathedral light and the sunlight. So what I'm going to do is play around a bit with this, and I'm going to bring the light shining through and have a bit of light on the front of the cathedral here and darker behind. Um, so I'm going to you know, add to this picture, make it how I want it, and have light shining through. So in this picture we've no light here. In mine we've got a lot more light and shadow here. And this one we've got the light here, but I want to have the light shining across here and have dark and dark here and then light across the top of this, um, these walls and towers here. I want to be using fairly loose work again today, so quite big brush work, um, and I'm going to also incorporate detailed work into that. So we'll start off with the masking fluids. I'm going to start off with the SAA fine line one here, um, the blue masking with the applicator and then also my mapping pen and the liquid for some of the larger white areas. And then once that's dry, we'll be able to work straight into the painting, probably down from the sky and then fairly loosely throughout the slot. Um, but I want to paint the figures first. We're going to paint the salient points first. So I'll be working on this style that I learned from this gentleman in New Zealand ages ago, a great artist. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be using his style um, to use different brushes, so slightly stiffer brushes for dry brush work, but painting in with the swords, doing these figures first, um, the details, the post van and so on, all of that sort of fine work first, and then finishing up with the loose work. Let's take a look at uh, some of the brushes that we've got and just how we might use those as well while we're at it. We've got to think about how we're going to do these cobbles as well, and uh, I'll decide that as I go along. I might well use um, a hate brush for that and break it up a bit. Let's take a look at some of the tools of the tray that we're going to use. I just mentioned the blue masking fluid and the applicators for that. Um, the fine line one as well, which has this lovely nozzle at the end, putting fine uh, marks on with the masking fluid. Then we've got our painting knives here, and the painting knives are different in that the painting knife is angled like this, as like a trowel, as compared to the one on the right, which is a palette knife. That's a palette knife and not so useful to us, and this is a painting knife, because our fingers don't touch the canvas with that one. So that's quite useful in that way. A whole series of those for then painting, uh, that sort of work with, with painting knife techniques. Then if I come across the, the brushes that I will use with acrylics and oils, I tend to stick to the filberts. Filberts are these flat, round-ended ones, because I find them very versatile. I like these uh, nylon ones because they're neither too harsh and don't lift the paint, or too soft and clog up. I always like long-handled brushes because I can reach out with those, especially for oil painting, in my impressionist way, and acrylics. I keep some fine brushes and riggers as well in there, and also one or two specialist brushes, like a fan, for instance, and a stipple brush here. Little bits of sponge as well, because we can use sponge not only with watercolour, we can also use sponge with um, oils and acrylics too, of course. Try to keep two different sets of brushes, one for oils and one for acrylics. They don't like to be mixed up, really, the brushes. And, you know, that's a limited set of brushes, but that's really all I'm going to need for my acrylics and oils. Now, watercolour is a different kettle of fish, because in watercolour I have a whole plethora, two cases of different brushes. And it isn't just like a fisherman who has hundreds of floats and only has two favourites and uses them. In my case, all of these brushes will receive use at different times. I've got these rubber-ended um, clay shapers, which I can also use for the masking fluid, the different shapes of those, wedge shapes and all sorts, stiffle brushes, um, fan brushes, flats, which we'll be using on this particular painting in Lincoln because we're using the flats for the dry brush work and for doing some of the windows. 
the big oval mops, one of my favourite brushes, and of course some hakes. We might well use the hakes on the sky. We've got these rake brushes, which are, are broken ended to give um, line effects such as uh, branches, twigs, leaves, stippling as well. Um, a very rough stipple brush here for going a very rough stipple. That's my mapping pen for using with a masking fluid. We're going to need that shortly. Um, we've got sword brushes for painting the figures with. Very useful for painting figures, these swords. And I don't want a long floppy sword. I like a nice stiff little, um, not too stubby, but um, medium sword, which I can control more. So they're great for figure work. And you see, every brush here then has to use the ordinary rounds, of course, as well. Next is my palette of paints. Enough colours here for almost every subject under the sun. The new turquoise that I'm using is a lovely colour. I'll show you the basic sheets now, but it will be missing a couple of colours. The sheets that I'm going to show you are missing this, and it's also missing the cobalt violet. So turquoise and cobalt violet are new colours I'm using that I find very, very useful. As I've just been saying, to start off this painting, I want to start off with the masking fluid applicator. This will allow me to do very fine lines, and also the masking fluid pen, uh, the, mask, the, the mapping pen with the masking fluid, should allow me to do slightly heavier lines. Let's look at it as an example of that, just as we start off on these windows here. So with this fine one, I'm able to come across these windows, just put the end of the nib on, and carefully, squeeze gently, just draw across. We can do very fine lines like this. And a little trick I mentioned on a previous painting is you can use a mat or a mount like this to aid you. If, for instance, your hand isn't quite as steady as you'd like, you can use a mat just to a mount just to come along and do these. So quite handy. I can do the same with a mapping pen. I take the mapping pen now and dip it in, and I want to do slightly heavier lines, for instance, down the edges of these windows, like this. I can rest my hand and come down and make the heavier lines of those windows. I don't really need a mat for that or a mount for that, but I could do it. I could do it this way, look. So I can use a mount in the same way to give myself a straighter line. Right, I'm going to go on now and do the entire painting of the white areas um, this way, so it'll take a little bit of time, and then I'll show you that when the blue masking fluid has dried out a bit. Well, my uh, masking fluid is now dry, as you can see here, and I'm going to go straight into painting the sky in, and then let that dry off and come into the figures and salient points, and then work through the middle again. So for this, I've got my oval mop and a hake. And I'm going to actually use the hake today, more. I'm going to stamp the paper down first of all. It's. Um, a 300 pound rough paper. So I just want to get first of all a, a, a wet paper to drop wet into wet here. Then I'm going to take some of that turquoise and um, drop that in first of all. Lovely turquoise we've got here. Mix it all up and get my paints nice and ready here for this. I'm going to some cerulean and I'm going to sit down a bit. 
That's it, we're ready. And we're going to be using composite of clouds. I don't want to use just the ones that are on the uh, picture. I'm going to use a composite. Pick that lovely turquoise first and just drop it in here. Big brush technique. Dark across that one there. I want that to be dark. And I'm going to come across the actually right across that bit of the steeple there. Right down behind here. Leaving that one light to catch the sunlight. I'm quite strong with my colour today on this. Right up through here. Through there. I'm going to whack even more colour into that because I really do want to get lovely strong colour in this one this time. And we can start to throw out these clouds. So I'll go to the cerulean now. And we'll just whack in some cerulean, even behind a bit of cloud here. A nice big fluffy cloud effect I want. There. I'm going to get into a stronger colour still. And Start to get a nice big bit of cobalt blue coming in. It's really whacking some lovely bits of cobalt into there. Down through here. That's it. Now the greys. We take some uh, burnt sienna. Take the burnt sienna and add it to a little bit of the cobalt. You should get a nice warm grey. There we go. And that warm grey needs dropping in. To take my mop now, I could carry on with the heat, but I'm going to take the mop and I'm going to take some um, Oreo in yellow. I really do want to keep a nice sunny effect on this. Well, you're in yellow, slightly greeny yellow, but it's a nice transparent colour. Drop that in to here while well, it's still got damp edges. Nice strong colours. To work on uh, one of these figures around here. I'm going to change my brushes now and go down to swords in a minute but just while I'm working on these ones in the foreground I reckon I can drop into those all right. We'll start off with a nice cobalt wash on here. Go right the way through the bag with that, right across the whole shoulder. And the pink that comes down here. Lifting out there with a the dry brush, look. Couple of miles again. Right down there. A little bit warmer. I'm going to drop in some. Keep it simple. I want to get a couple of strokes of time, that's all. There we 
over here her um, clothing use the cobalt vines again to start off with just to get the, the wash going and into that I'm going to drop some cadmium orange Into that I shall drop some rose. Darker areas here. That rose is actually not really dark, just a bit lighter than that. Not bad, huh? And some scarlet. Really go for it. Get some nice colour going here. Yeah. Now we build these colours up. Back to the rose again. Feel the cool in there. Around a collar here. Try and keep it simple, just a sort of one stroke brush work if we can almost. Now back to her again. They're risking a little bit of bleeding going on, but not to worry, we'll still go for it. I'm going to put some ultramarine into here. We can get that arm dark. There is a strap over her shoulder. I'll deal with that in just a moment. Down around there. Right down to here. A little bit lighter then. So we're left the two blues blend in together a bit. Nice cheerful painting. Yeah, down darker still, I'm going to go down to my Prussians and a little bit of purple. And while I'm at that, with that Prussian and purple, I'll do her hair here as well. Very, very dark. Darker still, take some Prussian and a little bit of the burnt sienna. Really go darker into the hair. Right down to the yeah. Let's work up these darks around shadows around where her bag and stuff is here now. And then same here and her legs. Finally so working these darks, so we want to get that bag a little bit darker here. There we go, in that bit. And of course the shoes, just mark them in. It's 
simple as we can. Now, while that's still wet, we need the strap across the shoulder to be created. And I'm going to try and lift that out with this brush. Come down there, down the brush, and just try and lift out. And I have you down to the bag there. That's the way I look. I'll just tighten up over that later. That we should be able to escape the hat. I can do it with a knife as well. Might be able to. Yep, yeah, just scrape out the paint off there. Coming down to that bag. Oh, her shoulder. Like that. Again. Down to this area here, take a little bit of the cobalt violet and just soften it in. Let the paint just tint into the refraction. Now on these jeans, let's have some cerulean blue. To the, um, I'll start with a bit of the turquoise and cerulean blue together. A rather nice base to this, these jeans. It'll also work towards the sky as well. Sort of the leg there, did just bring that down a bit? She's lost a bit of her. Alright. Leaving the bag. <coughs> We're leaving the bag, of course. Tint it slightly, a slight tint, bring it down to a shadow into there. Now we've got this turquoise going on, so let's come down to a bit more cerulean now and drop that in. A bit darker. into a blade and I'll just see if we can bring a bit of that shirt pattern onto here. Just got a, a checkered shirt on under there. Just flip that in, give an indication of it. <coughs> All the way down here. And here towards where her shoes are, we'll just darken down and just show some shadow there. Do just link in with this figure next to it. Okay, I have to change down dresses now. I want to start using my swords, but I need a bit more detail in some of these figures. Now, we'll look at these figures over here. Again, I've got my cobalt violet. Down her shoulder here, and her dress all the way down there. A little bit of um, blue coming across the back. Oops, too much. Lift that out. Very strong that was. Lift that out. I didn't want it that strong by any means. So the beauty of the swords is we can use them in different directions like this. Right, and then we'll uh, take some of the, the red again, drop that in. Comes around there, just around her shoulder, back here behind. I'm going to keep this simple, down to the dress. And we'll come back down to that rose again, start 
cooling things off and dropping things in. Rather nice, and we just drop in those creases into the dress like that. We want to keep it as simplified as possible. Again, the same over here in a way. We'll have that cobalt violet, a lovely colour just to start off with to get the wet into wets going. Down, out of that of her dress here, all the way down through into there. And then we'll drop in that red. It's even stronger here. And in fact, I want some of the um, chrome yellow and a little bit of the cadmium orange going on in this, in this one. Here, yeah, a bit stronger. Put it into here. And back to the red again. Dropping one colour into another rather than just mixing. Sometimes mixing can make things very muddy and if we drop these colours in like this we can get a lovely effect. Look. So I'll take a bit of the purple now, just dropping the purple under the arm and down the shadows. Around here, right down through uh, to there behind the girl. Come back to the girl herself. Grays we've been making, just paint underneath her arm a little. Just to tint it, that's all. Slight tint there, just to show that elbow and a little bit of the raw sienna for the um, hand there. And talking of raw sienna, we need to bring that right through her hair here. A bit stronger with it. A bit across her hair there. Down. Through into the reflections of the blue. Down here. And then we'll be a bit darker in a moment. Just lift off the top a bit there to make it a bit lighter. That's it. Now into here. We want a nice deep brown. So we'll take the sienna again. Drop that in. Let the wet to wet do the work for feeling the hair there. Climbing on down through there. I want to go much darker, don't I? So we'll take that Prussian blue on the brown again and we'll start dropping that in. Again, to get the feeling of the hair. Aren't always what you think they're going to be, heat masks and so on. Colours change dramatically by the reflected light around them and a lot more. So I'm putting a bit of purple now back into the back of this head. Purple and brown. Give it a bit more warmth, a bit more depth. still on the one behind so a bit of fraction darker there maybe put a second coat on. I 
And again, we want to have a bit of flesh tone going on, so well, a bit of that. Cobalt violet into there, and a wee bit of rose into the back of that, just to give a bit of depth of colour. Do the same into a hand here, just a little bit into there. We'll just come back here, touch up this dress just a bit in the shadow. shape out a fraction and just here as well and there's our figure there now that's a little bit dry now so I can afford to go back with a deeper blue and just touch up a little of the curls in the hair we'll do a bit of touching up later but there we are that's almost got that there now The figure behind there. While I'm at it here, she could do the a little bit darker now and this area. Now it's just, just dried a bit, I can go in there and give that little bit of detail, not too much, just a few touches here and there. And am I able to lift out here at all? Let's see. I can lift out the straps on the back there as well. Down. Can I scratch it? Because it's quite heavy paper. Let's see if we can scratch into this. Not too much. Well, there, let's see. There we are. Over here, this lady has got a cerulean wash just in across here. And then drop into that a little darker fashion. Just to give the indication, the feeling, the illusion of her having a Tight raincoat on. And the lady there in the front, very deep purple brown. She'll go nicely against the others because she'll be dark against the light. Into that, that'll give me that lovely red 
Barry. There we one little touch of cool just on the back there, just to bring it out. Now these figures here, take some raw sienna, put her face in there. So we that one there. Just a touch of the cool show head. Just indicate an eye, the face, slight bit of feature, nothing much. Just a there we go. Just to give an illusion of something going on there. To darken this again. This hand is pretty much darker here. So I'm going to come back into this now. And just work her hair a little bit more. figures. The background here, um, it's a dark figure again against the light. So we're playing our lights against darks all the time here. as well, quite dark. There we go. Now to go very dark around there. I'm going to take the Prussian again and brown. Just find the edge of that hair. Comes out and down around the shoulder here. Right down there. Just indicate the face. A couple of bobs all we need. Put more purple into it. Let's see if we can get the figure. the beauty of these fan brushes, sorry these sword brushes now, is that I can 
manipulate them as I want. Strokes just indicate his feet here. So all we've got to do just indications. A bit dark around his head. Same here, there's a little touch of yellow coming down to the t-shirt there. Yep. Right, any more figures? Yes, there's a couple back here. So there, I actually want a little bit of This red coming into the face, it's just a little touch of the bounce scanner. And then again, around them, we should be painting darker. feeling of what's going on behind. All right. Are the salient points there? I don't think so. Back to my mop. Let's have a look at this area. I think I'd like to go Cooler there. A tint of cobalt violet and uh, a little bit of the Prussian mix from earlier. Right down to there, just give it a wash. Whatever that wash is going to be, just under the window here, 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 and there maybe. Certainly through here. It's quite a bit darker just under there, in fact. We've got this reflection in the windows, too. Right, we're going to move forward now and um, start working on this part of the uh, cathedral. 
and I've already brought some light across to show sunlight on it. Now I want to start working under those shadows and recesses. I want to make the background much darker to start with. So I'm going to take some ultramarine, a little touch of purple, and we'll put a, a glaze over that. So ultramarine, and a little touch of purple, just to warm it a fraction. Take it back a wee bit. In fact, I may even put a little bit of um, about sienna in, just to warm it a bit more as well. There we are. And we'll put a thin glaze across the whole of this part of the tower and darken this whole tower down. Nice even glaze. I've only got a rough paper, I don't want to use the rough texture yet, I'm just... Uh... There we go. That's it. Don't want it in the wrong places, so if we get a little bit over, we'll lift it out. Now, we'll also be doing some other details there. We've got a bit of tower coming up behind. still damp but it's I think just dry enough to work on so we'll start to work up again same colour again the ultramarine blue little touch of the burnt sienna just to make our darks we'll gradually build it up sienna. gradually build it up
need the basic uh, darker colours. Now I've got to just build them up just a little bit more using ultramarine and dark sienna just to get my my dark stone here. I'm putting light glazes over in the darker colours. ready to uh, start work on the rest of the area. I'd like to get these details into this next. I'm going down to a slightly coarser brush, um, still a fine round. This one will hopefully give me the neat, tidy, thin line that I want. I'm going to do some crushing and um, Crushing and burnt sienna to really start to get these little lines in now. Of the Tudor oak. Post box. So we've got in our cadmium orange. Right, 
Sachen hier. Rose, and then I'm going to put in some dark sienna underneath here. I'm going to do some purple at the end. Across under here, it's a bit warmer. Up here now, to look at these things. Got a nice light yellow going on down the edge. Some lovely colours here. We've already painted in the uh, masking fluid there, so I should be alright. That was a nice mixture of orange and red going on there for a quick look. Put that dry back and we'll work over here. Lovely colour we need for over there. Test it out. Well, that's rather nice, isn't it? Purple into it, maybe. Shall we?
Okay, the paint's dry, so it's time to take off the masking fluid now. And now the masking fluid is removed, we just need to touch up some of these light areas and put the details in, the final details in, 